If you've ever watched a video that has one of those multi-frame split screen effects and thought that looks amazing, but it's probably way too complicated for me to do, you are in the right place. In this video, I'm gonna show you two different ways to create incredible split screen collages in DaVinci Resolve 19. The first method is super quick and easy. It's perfect for beginners and doesn't use any fancy plugins or anything. Then we'll step it up with a slightly more advanced style that gives you a little bit more creative control, but is still super easy to do. And here's the best part. You don't need to be a pro editor or spend hours pulling your hair out to make either of them happen. Trust me, by the end of this video, you'll be able to add these effects to your videos with confidence. And we're gonna do the whole thing without ever leaving the edit page, no fusion. So secure the cup and let's dive in. Okay, so we've got our timeline open here in DaVinci Resolve, and right now we're looking at a horizontal version, but I will do a vertical one after as well. For the first method that we're going to talk about today, I think of it as the most simple method because it uses tools that you've probably used before up in the top right here in your inspector. And if you're not seeing this up in the top right, we wanna click on inspector and that should open up. So the first thing that we wanna do is take our three clips that we have on our timeline here. So we've got this shot of a well welcome sign. We've got this shot down a bridge and then we've got one of Sydney and we're going to stack them on top of each other. So now all we can see is the top one, but if we want to disable that, we can hit D and then we can look at what's underneath it. And if we want to re-enable it, we can hit D again and it will turn that back on. Next, we need some kind of a guide or a grid so that we can see where we want to put things. In the top right corner of the viewer, there's this little button here where you can turn on and off guides and there's a little drop down menu so you can choose which ones you want to see. So if I want to see this 9 by 16 vertical, that kind of splits things into three. It's not quite a perfect split into thirds, but it's pretty close if we're just going to eyeball it. Next, we're going to grab our top clip and we're going to use the transform controls in our inspector to position it where we want it. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to just move it over just a little bit so that that welcome sign is right in the center. Then I'm going to disable that clip by hitting D and I'm going to go down to the second clip. I'm going to move this one over to the left side using the position. Then I'm going to disable that one and I'm going to click on Sydney and position him over in the right third there. Now I'm going to click on all the clips and hit D to re-enable them. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our cropping panel is open here. And we can start to crop on this top clip by moving the crop right and crop left sliders. So we're cropping from the left. And if you want finer adjustments, you can adjust it by clicking on the numbers and dragging instead of on the slider. So I'm gonna go just outside that line because I know that that line is not quite one third. And then we can do the same thing from the other side. This could be good. We could be good with this. If we're okay with a quick eyeball, you could be done at this point. But I'm gonna show you how to get a lot more accurate with it. So let's kind of undo our cropping here for now. What I'm gonna do is click retain image position. Now. If I go crop left all the way, we can see that it's 3840. So that's the whole width of that clip. Now, if I were to do a little bit of math here and I divided 3840 by three, because again, we're dividing this into three equal splits, I'm gonna get 1280. So if I type in 1280 into my crop left and I type in 1280 into my crop right, because I've chosen retain image position, it's actually staying perfectly centered. So if I didn't have that, it's cropping based on the fact that I've moved this clip over a little bit and it'll move the crop with it. But what I want it to do is retain the image's position or retain where the crop is happening and I can move the clip within that crop. Now, technically we don't have to crop the left or the right clip because they're hiding underneath here. Like if I disable that middle clip, you can see that there's still stuff going on under there. But if we did want to crop them so that they were only taking up a third as well, I could go to my left clip and use the crop right. First, I'm going to hit retain image position. And then instead of 1280, because this time we're actually cropping off not one, but two thirds, we're gonna double that. So instead of 1280, it's 
2560, and now you can see that it's cropped all the way over to that other third. And then we do the reverse for the clip of Sydney. So we're gonna hit retain image position, and instead of cropping from the right, we're gonna crop from the left. And if we re-enable our middle clip, we now have our three splits. And so turning our grid back on, you can see that that middle section is a little bit wider than the grid was for a nine by 16 right in the middle. Let's say you don't wanna do the math and you just wanna eyeball it, but you want a more accurate grid so you're eyeballing it is a little bit closer. Here's what you can do. Go to your effects panel. If you're not seeing that, you can click effects up here. And then we're gonna go and search for grid, making sure that we're selected on open effects. We're gonna grab and drag the grid onto the adjustment clip and it's gonna add a crazy grid on top. We're gonna to make some adjustments here. So we want three column cells and one row cell. Then we want to turn the major line spacing all the way down, turn the horizontal line width all the way down and the vertical line width down quite a bit until it's just a skinny line like that. And then we're going to slightly bump the zoom up until we get rid of the lines on the left and right edge, just like that. So now if I were to do the first method where I just eyeballed it using the cropping sliders here, I could get much more accurate to a perfect third that way. And then you wanna just make sure that afterwards you go in with your adjustment clip and you disable it if you don't want those lines. If you like the lines, leave the lines. Now with all three of these clips, they were horizontally framed 4K clips. But what happens if we want to include a vertically framed clip. Like for example, this shot of Sydney is a little bit tight when it's cropped in from 4K horizontal, but I happen to have a nice shot of him doing the same thing in vertical that's got a little bit more space. It's important to note that if you're using a vertical clip on a horizontal timeline like this, you can go into your retime and scaling and choose how it's going to show up on the timeline. So right now I have my default set to fit, which is what we want. So it's gonna fit the whole clip within the timeline. Whereas if it's accidentally set to crop or if it's set to fill, it's going to kind of show up a little bit differently. I want it to be fit, and then if I need to increase the size a little bit, which we will in a second, then I can from here. So I'm going to replace the horizontal clip, and since the other two are already in the right place, all we have to do is deal with this third one. So I'm going to use the position to move it over to the left. But the problem is, because it's a vertical clip, it doesn't quite take up the full third, so we're going to have to bump the size of it using zoom, so we'll go 1.06. I found that works for vertical clips here. And then I'm just gonna use my position to put it in the right place and we're good to go. Now, if you did want to crop this as well, things work a little bit different. Now, if we did want to increase the size of Sydney here a little bit and then crop it, we could take the same action as we did before and hit retain image position. But you'll notice that when we go to crop left, if I type in 2560, something's wrong because the crop left only goes all the way up to 1215. We have to redo our math. So 1215 divided by three times two. So when I type in 810, we've got that perfect crop there and now I can adjust if I need to. So now we've used two horizontal clips and one vertical clip so we can mix them and we've done our split screen effect on the timeline. And like I said, I think of that as the simple way because it only uses the transform and crop tools in your inspector, things that you've probably used before. But if you want more power and you want more flexibility, then we're gonna get into method two. So we've got the same three clips stacked on top of each other once again over here, but we're back to square one. And in this case, I actually do have that vertical clip already in here on the bottom. With this one, we don't need any kind of grid or guide because the effect is going to do it all for us. So we're gonna go to our effects panel. Again, if you're not seeing that, you gotta click effects up here. And then we're gonna go to open effects and we're gonna search for video collage. We're gonna drag that onto just the top clip. Now it's gonna do something weird off the bat. I'm actually gonna highlight the bottom two clips and disable them for now so we can see what it's actually doing to that top clip. Now we're gonna go into our inspector and click effects. And instead of create background, 
we're gonna change that to create tile. Now it's taking that whole clip and it's putting it in a little tile in the top left corner. Next, we have to set up our effect. So we're going to choose three columns and one row. And if we hit preview layout, we can show all three columns. So we can see we've got one clip on the left, one in the middle and one on the right, but they've got rounded edges and they've got all this space around them. So you can do all sorts of different things with these three tiles or however many you want. Let's say we wanted six, or we wanted even more in the vertical. You can change your columns and rows to whatever you want, and then you can also change things like the rounding. So if you wanted them to be more rounded or less rounded, we're gonna go down to less rounded because that's what we eventually want. Then we've got our left and right margins. So if we wanted them just in the middle or if we wanted them all the way out, we wanna get rid of our margin. So we're gonna put that at zero. Top and bottom margins as well, we're gonna put at zero. Then we've got horizontal spacing. So that will be the spaces in between each clip. We're gonna turn that all the way down to zero so they're touching. And then again, vertical spacing as well, that's gonna make it so it takes up the whole frame. So basically we've taken everything in our globals to get the effect that we're looking for, and we've turned it all down to zero. Everything except for rows and columns should be zero. And then if we go back to our preview layout, we can see that it's put that clip over on the left-hand side. Now, what if we don't want that clip on the left-hand side? We're gonna to go to tiles. So there's a little tiles tab here and we're gonna change it to tile two. Now it's in the middle. Or if we want it on the right side, we could change it to tile three. In this case, I think I want this one in the middle. And now that we've selected the tiles tab instead of the globals, we've got more options down here. We can open and close any of these menus, but we're gonna get to that in a second. First, I wanna recenter my welcome sign. So I'm gonna go back to the video tab and using the position, I'm going to move it to the left. Now notice it doesn't move where the crop is. So my tile, my split is staying right where it is and I can move the position wherever I need it. And if I re-enable those other two clips now, you'll see that they're just hovering underneath that top clip. So what we're gonna need to do now is we're going to click on our clip that we've already set up our tiles the way that we want them. And we're going to either hit Command C, Control C on a PC, or we can right click and hit copy. Then we want to highlight the other two clips and we're gonna hit option or alt V or right click and hit paste attributes. And then all we want to have selected here is plugins and hit apply. Now the other two clips look like they disappeared, but they're really just hiding underneath that top one. What we can do is grab our second clip, the middle one here, go back to effects, go into the tiles tab and change it to tile one and it'll move it over to the left hand side. Now again, we can reposition it using just the regular transform tools. And then we're gonna go to our third clip. We're gonna select that, go to effects. Under tiles, we're gonna choose tile three and it's gonna move it over. Now, again, this is that vertical clip so it doesn't quite take up the whole width of that third of the screen. So we're gonna go to video, we're gonna zoom it by 1.06 and then it should take up that whole portion of the screen. And again, because this one's vertical, it doesn't really have anywhere to go unless we zoom it more. Now, the nice thing about doing it this way is that again, we've got all those extra things that we can do where we can round corners and we can add margins and all that kind of stuff. But also if we decide we want to change the positions of everything, it's super easy. You just go in here and you can swap out. Let's say I put Sydney in the middle and change this one to the tile three position. I don't have to do any math. It just is so easy to put together. Now, like I said, there are some more controls that you have within this effect in the tiles tab, but I really don't use most of these most of the time. We've got the ability to customize the size and shape of a single tile. We've got the ability to resize the content within the tile. But like I said before, I like to do that with the transform controls. We've got tile styling so we can add a border, but unfortunately, as we add a border, if it's a color like my nice bright yellow here, notice that it comes up the wrong color because it's actually going through all of my color grading. So I would probably add a border another way. We've got the ability to add a drop shadow to a tile. We've got tile animations, and then we've got the easing and blur of those animations. Again, I prefer to do my animation if I am going to try and animate something like this. I like to do it in different ways. So you've got lots of controls 
here if you want them, but I think the main controls that I like to use are actually the ones on the globals. And then if you do change something in the globals, you just have to make sure to go change it in all of them or copy and paste and change the tile numbers again for them. And so that's how we can use the video collage effect to get this same split screen look. Now, like I said before, we also might want to do this in a vertical setting. Now, this time we've got the opposite that we had before. So we've got horizontal clips on a vertical timeline. So with method number one, we're gonna highlight all three clips. We're going to type into the zoom 1.06 because remember the 16 by 9 doesn't quite take up one third of the whole clip or of the whole frame. Now I'm going to take my top clip here and I'm going to move it up and then I'm going to take my bottom clip and I'm going to move it down. And honestly, for that one, that's pretty much it. Now for the second method, we can do the same thing where we just go 1.06. So we're making them a little bit bigger and we're going to grab video collage, drag it on the top. We're going to go create tile. We're going to do the opposite in columns and rows. So this time we want one column and three rows. We're going to turn everything down to zero and we're going to copy. So command or control C. We're going to highlight the other two clips, option or alt V to paste attributes. Make sure plugins is selected and hit apply. Then we're going to go to the middle one, go to effects, tiles, change it to tile two, go to the third one, go to tiles change it to tile three. And that's how we can do a vertical frame split screen with method two. Okay, so quickly to recap, the first method using transform controls and guides is super simple, super great for beginners. It's fast and easy to eyeball and it doesn't require any extra tools or plugins. This works great, especially if you're just doing it once on your timeline. And then the second method using the video collage effect offers a lot more control and flexibility, things that you can do with it, but it has a bit more of a setup. You can create a highly polished result with features like rounded corners, margins, and customizable tiles. And once you've done the setup, if you are doing this across a bunch of clips, it's nice and easy to copy and paste. Both approaches have their strengths and weaknesses, and now you've got the tools to decide which one works best for your project. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting the like button, and don't forget to drop a comment if you have any questions, or if you use this in your project, tag me so I can see it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.